In 1988, I graduated law school from Boston University School of Law. I was uh, very idealistic. I wanted to uh, help other people who grew up with less than I did. So my first job was at a uh, nonprofit called Community Legal Services. It was based in Philadelphia, and my office was in uh, North Philly at the corner of Broad and Erie Streets. If you have any familiarity with Philadelphia, um, that North Philly is a pretty tough part of town. Um, and if you really have familiarity with sort of the urban environment in the late 80s, um, it was really a tough time for urban America. Uh, we had significant job declines and loss of income due to the loss of blue collar jobs uh, in these sort of rust belt cities. We had crack cocaine that was exploding and really devastating our urban neighborhoods. So my job was primarily to represent uh, indigent clients who, in civil matters, who were losing their housing. Some of them were renters, some of them were homeowners, actually most of them were homeowners, but all of them were coming to us because um, they were gonna be out on the street. So I would come to work in the morning, our waiting room would be full, people would be out the door and down the street. Philadelphia in the winter is very cold, rainy, sometimes snowing. In the summer, it is hot, it is muggy, it is incredibly uncomfortable, and it did not matter. There were always a lot of people waiting to be seen um, by the winter. And even though I was doing really what I wanted to do, which was to help people, it was an incredibly frustrating experience because by the time people came to me, they were really sort of at their most desperate and I may have been working with them on a narrow legal issue when they had so many other issues that were going on in their lives that had they received services much earlier, none of those bad things would have happened. In 1986, Congress passed major federal tax reform. And in that tax package, there was a thing called the Low Income Housing Tax Credit. And that, that program has turned into the major way in which the federal government is uh, enabling the development of affordable housing. Using um, that tool, uh, we have developed two million affordable housing units across the state. I'm sorry, across the nation. Uh, what is affordable housing? Affordable housing is income restricted. So not everybody can go there. You really have to uh, make no more than certain amounts that are determined by the federal government. And it can also be focused on special populations. So it might be for families, seniors, um, vets, people with special needs, people who are homeless. So I bumped into this program um, for like five years um, and made a complete pivot in my professional life, got out of being a lawyer and got into building stuff. So let's take a look at what it looks like. So this is actually pretty close by. Go down the street, go down to Dowerty, back down a couple of miles. This is uh, Wexford Way and Carlo Court. Uh, Wexford Way is a family project. Carlo Court is a senior. 180 units of affordable housing, so income restricted. This site actually used to be a public housing site, the only one in Dublin, that we redeveloped about 10 years ago. When we um, knocked down the old project, everybody who was a public housing resident was eligible to come back. And in addition to the 180 affordable housing units, actually if you drive by the site, there's also a whole bunch of market rate townhomes that were developed, I think it was by Gold Brothers. Um, so we have affordable, affordable in the middle there, daycare that's sort of open to everybody, and market rate, and it all acts and lives really as one community. Oops, a too fast. Okay, ballot crossing. This is also in Dublin. They're also your neighbors. Uh, West Dublin Fart Station, like a block and a half, two blocks from the Fart Station. 
sixty six units the name down of crossing has some meaning it's actually the property it has a veteran's preference so anybody who is a vet gets in line first the units are for ham for families and for homeless veterans all the properties that are really developed by eden housing and by our peers they look they have similar curb appeal to marjory housing they're professionally managed and the extra thing that we really bring to all our properties is services so we provide services for kids seniors families we provide after school programs educational programs computer labs with access to high speed internet access to food access to health care referral to counseling when that's needed okay picture of the people you also have those so um what does it matter so we provide this housing some people benefit all of you know that we are experiencing a housing crisis out of proportion to anything that we've ever experienced in california before if you yourself have not been directly affected by it either you're someone in your family or somebody you know has the development that organizations like eden housing does is really just one tool among many um, in order to sort of affect the crisis but when we do provide homes we provide not just that but we also provide a community and within that community we really create social connection between our residents and that package creates more benefits than just housing so what we find is that we have two other things happening that i'll talk about tonight there they are uh, health care outcomes and educational attainment it's a group called the center for outcomes research that did a study they looked at 185 affordable housing properties across the country and they looked at health care cost utilization and outcomes and what they found was that the use of medicare by these residents the cost of the services that they received went down by 12 percent from before entering affordable housing they found that utilization of primary care so going to your doctor on a regular basis went up by 20 percent and they found that going to the emergency room utilizing that as their method of, of uh, health care which is of course the most expensive way you can do that went down by 18 percent another study by the uh, Turner Center for Housing Innovation at uh, UC Berkeley surveyed residents at 16 affordable housing properties in California and they're really uh, they're asking questions basically about uh, economic impact and educational attainment 93 percent of parents reported that before that after they entered into affordable housing as compared to before their kids were better behaved they were great in school and ready to learn they found that their sons and daughters 70 percent of them that had previously not listed college as being a goal for them were now focused on going to college and the parents reported that 66 percent of their kids all had better grades after moving into affordable housing we're, we're hoping that four percent they were already doing well in school so they're going to go to college uh, so how does this uh how does this all affect you and uh when we develop this housing we use this federal credit but it's not enough it actually takes a lot more funds Ballot crossing, Carlo Court, they each took five to ten different sources of funds in order to make them happen. So we do that by also getting funds from the state of California and from local sources. In 2016, the county of Alameda passed a $500 million bond, all of 
which is being used to help develop more affordable housing kind of like this. We're actually seeing uh, this year some of those first projects that were funded with those dollars are starting to come out of the ground and are being uh, leased up. And uh, we expect those funds to last another three to five years. In 2018, in November, the voters of California passed Props 1 and Props 2. Props 1 and 2 in total are making $26 billion available to develop more affordable housing. And all those dollars are going to focus on, again, vets, families, seniors, really with a focus of trying to get people off the streets. And I actually have a prop in this, I didn't have this last time. So this is the uh, San Francisco Chronicle, the front page from Sunday, um, below the fold. Uh, there's an article about homelessness and just basically citing that there's just been a huge growth in homelessness among people over 50 years old. So what I would encourage you to do is um, to please learn more. Just get on Google and look up Eden Housing 50 Stories. That'll get you to, oops, not there. Okay, here we go. Um, last year we celebrated our uh, 50th anniversary and as part of that we collected stories from our residents and some of our community partners. Um, and in there it's like video, some of our podcasts, but people telling their stories about how affordable housing has really affected their lives. So don't look through all 50 of them, um, but uh, I would suggest that you go to, uh, look for the story about Ballard Crossing where there's a, uh, a vet who told the story about how he was living in a car how he was disabled and how he moved into Valley Crossing and how that just transformed his life. And then I'd also encourage you to go and look for a story by uh, a kid named uh, Bill Wynn. Bill's family were refugees. He grew up at one of our Eden housing properties in San Jose, uh, living in affordable housing, really, as I said, transformed his life. And uh, he's now in law school at Columbia and his brother's actually a uh, man student. Or you can just uh, ask me. Thank you.